So last night while I was just kind of running some duels and messing around with different builds, I came across a build with a weapon that I don't think people have utilized nearly enough. Literally all you need for this build is a frozen needle and light load. And our light load fashion is gonna be the skeletal mask, Ronin armor, blood soaked manchettes, and the Ronin greaves. Now light load isn't necessarily needed. If you wanna run high poise with the frozen needle, it works pretty well too. And if you wanna go ahead and pause and take a look at my stats and talismans, you can do so now. Now I cannot wait any longer to show you guys how effective this build is. Let's jump right in. Bayrath of Soul. <laughs> oh yeah. They are 100% gonna hyper armor through that. Nice. I, I do respect people who use the Watchdogs GS at short range. Oh my gosh. Oh, nice. There we go. Good fight, Feyreth. Now I feel the need to kind of explain this weapon. The weapon art that comes on it is Impaling Thrust. Nothing crazy. It's, it's all right though. You know, you can definitely get some roll catches and decent punishes with it. Now the interesting thing about this weapon is actually the heavy attacks. The running heavy is normal. But the regular heavy and the back step, you get this projectile, as you can see. Now, not only is the back step heavy very, very good, you can chain it into a back step light attack. So yeah, basically this weapon is just a punish machine. You have very low committal attacks. You can absolutely shred somebody up close. And then you can just use the projectiles as a spacing tool to put on constant pressure Punish slow attacks, slow weapon art, slow spells. You get the point. Seji, hello. Oh, nice. Nice. So close. Yeah, Impaling Thrust, probably not the the uh, easiest weapon art to hit. Ooh, nice turnaround. Um, but yeah, whenever you do hit it, I've always found that it does good damage. Oh, damn, that reached. Holy hell. Bro, that was like last pixel. Okay, Seji, I see you. Nice. Woo! Hit him with the sauce. Good fight, Seji. See, after using this build quite a bit last night and just hopping back on and using it today, it really makes me question why people don't use this weapon more. You ready to get needled? I don't think you're ready. Okay, ooh, Wing of Estelle. It's not too common that you see that. Ooh, nice. Okay, so yeah, he, he kind of has a similar weapon. Oh no, I keep rolling, but it's like. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. Dang, I keep trying to outpace his projectiles, but that's just not gonna happen. Ooh! Cross proc at the perfect time. Good fight, M. Cody. Hello. Hey. Oh, nice. There we go. Oh, no stagger. Gosh, dude, it's so good as a punish tool. Oh, we dodged it? That was actually so cool. There we go. Good fight, Cody. Okay, so I know most of you guys are now probably thinking the same thing, and that is, Monk, 
This looks very, very annoying to fight against. And that's because it is. New Blade Abop. Is that facts though? Can anybody vouch for this man? Is the New Blade album a bop? Any drainers in the monk community? Oh, he's got Briar armor on. Oh, that's Moonvale. Hello. It was kind of hard to tell. Up. Oh. Oh, what? Oh, dang it. I knew it was coming too. Good fight, Blade. All right, real quick, I'm gonna answer a couple questions. As always, if you would like to ask me something, click the Discord link in the description and then drop your question in the questions channel. Now, Big Sniff asked me, how many likes for a GF reveal? Uh, I'll actually go ahead and reveal my girlfriend right now. This is Hu Tao, and I love her. Then Pug Whisperer asked me, what is your favorite game of all time? Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2. Nothing tops it, in my book. Captain Canoodle said, if you could make one change to Elden Ring combat mechanics, what would it be? Oh boy, you guys are not going to like this answer. Or some of you might. Some of you are going to really, really hate it because it's this is literally you. I would make it so whatever you get summoned in with or whatever you choose to invade with, like in your actual loadout slots, that's all you can use while you're invading or dueling. Honestly, I, like I don't even care anymore. If you are one of those people that has 20 weapons at your disposal and you're quick swapping between every single attack, like, oh, you go from UGS to HTS to a scythe with spinning slash to Knight Rider Glaive with flaming strike back into UGS, HTS, running R2, running R2, Horfrost stomp, switch back to the halberd. It's like, dude, please stop. Hello, Bubba. Hey. What's up? Monkey mash. He did the mash. The monkey mash. Oh. 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 Very, very good fight. Oh, oh, Poio. Hello. just out of range that's the only thing that kind of sucks is the range you know isn't the best on this weapon but obviously the projectiles make up for the lack of range good fight poio oh okay he's free aiming now Did we trade him Oh, I thought the back step would have uh, would have put me out of range, but no, sadly. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! Good fight, Yule. <laughs> Red scarf gambit, you're gonna be my final opponent. Let's make this a good fight. Ooh, bloody slash. Not too common that you see that. That's interesting. Yep. Thrusting talisman. Nice. Good fight, Red Scarf Gambit. All right, my rating for this build is going to be a very, very nice 9.6 out of 10. 
Okay, so there is literally one con with this build, and that is people can try to bait out your use of the projectiles and kind of dance around you. And if they have a long, fast weapon, such as a Nagakiba or something like that, you can kind of get clapped. However, you can just do the same thing to those people. So it's not one of those flaws where it's, it's so detrimental to the build that some fights are just simply unwinnable. This weapon is good against pretty much any matchup. Even against casters, which can kind of shit on this build a little bit, you can still punish their spells if they're using, you know, more powerful, slow wind-up spells. Just the amount of pressure you can apply, the pace that you can play with, you can go super passive, you can go super aggressive, just change between the two mid-fight. It, it is a very confusing weapon to deal with. And then tack on the light load. Yeah, I don't really need to say much on that. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't even mention Impaling Thrust. You can definitely get some good damage, some good punishes, especially if someone has a slow weapon and you make a read on them. Impaling Thrust ain't bad. It's, it's not too bad. So yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say. I'm very curious to see what you guys think. So if you have any thoughts on this build, go ahead and comment them down below. And you, you who hasn't clicked the subscribe button yet, do it. Give in. Become a fellow monk. And while you're doing that, you can click that notification bell as well if you want to be the first one to see whenever a new video drops. Thank you guys for watching this video today, and thank you so much for all the recent support. You guys have been going crazy. Stay safe. Love you guys. See ya!